Good evening, everyone. My name is Pranav, a legal intern at Lexis and Company for the month of June. A student of Krishna Jayanti College of Law, Bangalore. And today, I would be discussing about infancy under the Indian Penal Code. Sections 82 and 83 of the Indian Penal Code speaks about infancy. Infancy is one of the general exceptions under the Indian Penal Code. Section 82 states that nothing is an offence if it is committed by a child below the age of 7 years. Section 83 states that nothing is an offence if an act is committed by a child above the age of 7 but below the age of 12 who has not yet attained sufficient mental understanding or mental stability to understand the nature and the consequences of his conduct. Now let's look at the essential ingredients of sections 82 and 83. Firstly, act committed by a child below the age of 7. Section 82 presumes that an act committed by a child below the age of 7 is dolly incapax, that is, he is incapable of committing a crime and cannot be held guilty of any offence. This presumption is based on the fact that a child below the age of 7 cannot differentiate between right and wrong. And this is due to the fact that he has not yet attained sufficient mental stability to understand the nature and the consequences of his act and thus form the required mens rea. Secondly, Act committed by a child above the age of 7 but below the age of 12. Section 83 presumes that a child below above the age of 7 but below the age of 12 is dolly capax. That is, a child is capable of committing, a, committing an offence, provided that he has the sufficient mental stability or the maturity of understanding, um, the maturity of understanding his nature and consequences of his act. But again, this presumption is rebuttable. It is rebuttable on the ground of mischievous discretion of the child. The prosecution has to prove beyond reasonable doubt that a child that a child caused an act serious with mens rea and that he knew that his conduct was not mischievous but wrong. Over here, the liability of a child would not depend upon his age but upon his mental understanding or his maturity of understanding. And the last essential ingredient. Maturity of understanding. Section 83 talks about those offences which are committed by a child above the age of 7 and below, below the age of 12, provided that he has the sufficient mental stability to understand the nature and the consequences of his act. Here, nature and consequences of his act does not mean the penal consequences, but the natural, conse conse uh, natural consequences arising from the act committed by the child. Before convicting a child of an offence, a judge has to first conduct a trial and inquire whether the child has sufficient mental understanding so as to commit the crime and whether he is aware of the uh, aware of the consequences of his act performed. Furthermore, a study of the Juvenile Justice Act or the JJ Act is essential for the complete understanding of criminal liability in children. One of the major questions that arise in front of courts with regards to juven juvenile delinquents is the age of the juvenile. There are three such instances which arise in front of courts regarding juvenile delinquents. They are first is the relevant date or the commission of the offence or the date on which the child is brought before a relevant authority under the Children Act, Children's, Children's Court or any act. Secondly, the nature of the evidence required to prove that the age of the juvenile delinquent. And finally, is the stage at which the plea of the accused child can be taken. We can look at the following case law which talks about the age of a, ju a juvenile. The following case is Bhopram versus State of Uttar Pradesh. In this case, there was a conflict between the school certificate provided by the accused and the medical certificate. In the school certificate, it was shown that the accused was below the age of 16 during the commission of the act. But on the but the medical certificate provide uh, provided by the chief medical officer showed that the child or the accused was above 16 years of age during the commission of the act thus the supreme court held that they could uh, the supreme court held that a medical certificate is based on an estimate and sometimes there can be errors which can creep into the findings of the age whereas the supreme court also stated that the school certificate provided by the accused can be uh, what is that cannot be held uh, cannot be held of uh, my apologies again 
since there was no um, doubt to show that the entries could be forged in the school certificate the supreme court held that the school certificate was a right in determining the age of the accused and not the medical certificate hence the juvenile was not convicted i would like to lastly talk about arrest of juvenile offenders section 82 bars the conviction or detaining of any child below the age of 7 in a police station but if a child who has been uh, accused of any bailable or not bailable offense unless his release is likely to bring him into any danger of any fellow inmate or any other physical or psychological danger he cannot be detained in a police station or jail even if a juvenile is released even if, uh, even if a juvenile uh, even if a juvenile is arrested he will not be sent to jail but a, a reformatory home where his parents will be informed with this i come to the conclusion of infancy under the indian penal code